Today, I'm going to speak about a Gambino member who, in a twist, played the FBI by cooperating and ultimately not only took his own life, but killed an FBI informant before doing so. Nicholas Nicky Skin Stefanelli Sr. hailed from the Newark, Belleville, New Jersey area. And like many young guys who have an appetite for the street life, he began his career in crime by first committing burglaries, but graduated onto illegal gambling, extortion, drugs, and eventually murder. An arrest and indictment in 1972 had Nicky Skins and Robert Bisaccia, known as Cabert, and others charged with breaking into the house of Dominic Bruno. They were charged with breaking and entering and larceny. Bruno was a local thief who lived in North Newark. One of the co-conspirators, Gerald Festa, was an informant and gave them up for the robbery. After a trial, an Essex County jury found them guilty. The judge sentenced Cabert to five to seven years, and Nicky Skins received seven to nine years. After serving his time, Bobby Cabert would go on to become inducted into the Gambino family and hold the captain's position. Unlike Cabert, Nicky Skins would gravitate towards the Lucchese family's Jersey crew and was considered to be an associate of that crew. I remember his name came up one time during a conversation I was having with Joe Perna, who told me, Nicky Skins was with us years ago, but we released him to the Gambinos. And this was common. I remember meeting two members of the West Side who were former associates to Lucchese's Jersey crew as well. Nicky Skin's next big arrest didn't take place until the early 90s, which could be looked at as a blessing. At the time, the Jersey faction of Lucchese's was not in the good graces of its bosses, Vic Amuso and Gaspipe. By 1988, Vic and Gas wanted to kill the entire Jersey crew over money. Apparently, they were sending in a lot less than they were supposed to, which obviously didn't sit well with the Lucchese bosses. Nevertheless, when Nicky Skins was released from federal prison after serving about seven years, his time as a Lucchese associate would come to an end. He developed a close relationship with two Brooklyn members of the Gambino family, Nicky Carrazzo, a captain, and Lenny Di Maria. It would be Nicky Carrazzo who pushed the Lucchese to release Nicky Skins to the Gambino family, which they allowed, and Nicky Carrazzo proposed him for membership shortly after. As an inducted member, he was placed in Nicky Carrazzo's Brooklyn crew, but he would eventually be transferred to Jimmy Boy Delorado's crew, most likely after Nicky Carrazzo was arrested and went to prison. Sometimes when a captain goes away, his crew could get shuffled around. As a Gambino member, Nicky Skins bounced back and forth between New York and his hometown in New Jersey and was embraced and respected by fellow members of the life. All that would change due to a guy by the name of Joseph Rossi, who owned a video game and distributor business. In 2009, the FBI arrested Rossi for possession of illegal gaming machines and tax evasion. In an effort to get himself out from under those charges, he gave up a drug deal he was involved in and mentioned the names of his drug connection as Nicky Skins and his son, Nicky Jr. As a result, the FBI arrested both father and son. Nicky Skins was no stranger to prison, but the thought of his son being incarcerated was too much for him to bear. With that state of mind, he decided to make a deal to save his son. Arresting Nicky Jr. was a typical manipulation move by the FBI. They were hoping by locking the son up, it would weaken the father. In return, the FBI wanted him to wear a wire, which he began doing. Over the course of the following two years, he gave the FBI an open mic while he engaged in discussions with numerous wise guys. The FBI would encourage him to speak with guys involved in the cases they were working on. All of this was done with the stipulation that he testified when the cases went to trial. The recordings would implicate members and associates in the five families, as well as the families in Philadelphia and New England. These tapes would become known as the Stefanelli tapes. In May of 2010, Nicky Skins was wired for sound during a meeting between the Gambinos and the Philadelphia family. The meeting took place at a Kenilworth, New Jersey restaurant called La Griglia. The Gambino members were John and Joe Gambino, Nicky Skins, Lorenzo Menino, Alphonse Trucchio, and Michael Roccaforte. The Philadelphia members present were Joe Lagambi, Joseph Scoops Lacata, Anthony Stano, and Big Lou Fazzini. Nicky Skins is heard on the tape introducing John Gambino as a captain with the administration, meaning he was part of the Gambino panel. Scoops Licata introduced Legambi as their acting boss. At the time, Joey Molina was finishing up a federal sentence. At one point in the conversation, the Lucchese family came up. Apparently, the Lucchese's were encroaching on Philadelphia's Jersey territory. Scoops Licata a captain based in North Jersey, and the Philadelphia family was looking for the Gambino's support in this matter. 
Licata at one point was overheard saying, we still got to stay with the old rules, which John Gambino replied, only way to survive. The FBI must have been salivating listening to all of this. They would eventually arrest Legambi, Licata, and six others on a 52-count racketeering case. On June 30th, 2010, at a diner in Paramus, New Jersey, Nikki Skins met with Dean DePetra, a Gambino associate from Connecticut. DePetra ran a bookmaking operation, and Nikki Skins told him that he would inform his captain, Delarada, that they would work together on shaking down independent bookmakers in Connecticut. Naturally, the entire conversation was recorded. Another meeting took place in October 2010 at the American Bistro Restaurant in Nutley, New Jersey. During this meeting, Nikki Skins met with Scoops Licata and Big Lou Fazzini. But unlike their first meeting, Licata didn't say anything significant in this one. In December of 2011, Nikki Skins made a trip down to Florida. Once there, he met with the newly released Molino at a Dunkin' Donuts. For that meeting, the FBI made sure Nikki Skins had two recording devices, one on his body and one hidden in his watch. Nevertheless, Molino was leery of speaking with him and denied anything criminal. He also reported the meeting to his federal probation officer. When it came out that Nikki Skins was recording him, Molino complained that the FBI was trying to set him up, which they were. As for the double mic Nikki Skins, Molino supposedly said he should have been fucking electrocuted. As 2012 rolled around, Armed with dozens of tapes, the FBI decided it was time to deactivate Nikki Skins. They would take him off the street and put him into the witness protection program, where he would remain until they were ready to use him as a witness in these cases. By this time, he most likely met with the assistant U.S. attorney in preparation for these upcoming trials. Not only would he be scheduled to appear as a prosecution witness in the Philly trial, but in the New England trial of Baby Shaq's Minocchio and other cases as well. But Nikki Skins had other plans, one that included paying back Joseph Rossi, who he learned got him into the mess to begin with. On February 24, 2012, Nikki Skins and a friend of his, Jose Luis Rivera, entered Phoenix Amusements on Floyd Avenue in Bloomfield, New Jersey. The business belonged to Rossi. A security camera across the street would capture both men leaving shortly after entering the establishment. Not long after, Rossi's employee found his bleeding body on the floor. He'd been shot in the back of his head. Initially, the crime was believed to be a robbery gone bad. Being Rossi dealt with a lot of cash, but local detectives would be joined by personnel from the Essex Prosecutor's Office and the FBI. It didn't take long to figure out who was responsible for Rossi's murder. In fact, as soon as the FBI heard the name of the victim, they must have tried calling Nicky Skins. And when he didn't answer, they knew. And they had no idea where he was. What they also didn't know is days before Rossi's murder, Nicky Skins paid for his own funeral arrangements as not to burden his family. After leaving the crime scene that day, he checked himself into a room at the Renaissance Meadowlands Hotel in Rutherford, New Jersey. Two days later, on February 26, 2012, Nicky Skins' body was found. It was later determined he died from a drug overdose and planned his own suicide. It's been reported that Nikki Skins probably attempted shaking down Rossi, and when things went south, he killed him. Then realizing his deal with the government was blown, he killed himself. I strongly disagree. I personally spoke with the agent who was Nikki Skins' handle at the FBI. According to him, he said Nikki Skins knew he was never going to testify the whole time. When Nikki Skins was told they needed to pull him off the street, he asked for more time to wrap up his affairs. His handler also said he never intended to testify and had this plan the whole time. Subsequently, Jose Luis Rivera was arrested for the Rossi murder. First and foremost, I bring up the rules again. Had Nicky Skins obeyed Cosa Nostra rules and not sold drugs, he would have never been in this predicament in the first place. Secondly, he would be considered by the FBI a high-value informant, one scheduled to be a key witness in upcoming trials, more importantly, trials involving bosses. Yet the FBI couldn't prevent them from killing their informant and ultimately killing himself, but they put his life in jeopardy by not watching him. At any time, he could have easily been killed. Had they done their job and kept him under constant watch, the outcome would have been much different. Several articles quote a source that the FBI is saying, you can't keep somebody locked down 24-7. The FBI has thousands of sources all over. My take on that statement is it's a bullshit excuse and typical deflecting. Unfortunately, the story has an even sadder ending. In November of 2014, Nicholas Jr. decided to take his life in the same fashion as his father. I hope you enjoyed this story and please remember to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you could do that as well.
And I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day and I'll catch you on the next one.